Hi there. So here's your screencast for IB Physics Topic 2 from the core curriculum. This is about mechanics. So this is there's a lot here, so let's get started. So we'll start with some uh, familiar definitions. Displacement and distance. So displacement is the difference between your final and initial positions. So finals, final minus initial. So that's the, the delta in your position. And that can be negative since a vector quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. So, for example, you could finish, uh, you know, behind where you started. So your displacement could be could be backwards or negative. So we'll take an example: five forward and two back. You have a displacement of three. So you displaced forward three meters. Distance, however, is always positive. It's a scalar quantity. So if we do the above example there, where we move five forward and two back, our displacement would be seven meters. So here's a, a graphic that also helps define what the, the difference is. So dis their distance would be all along this path here. So if you walked all along there, that's your distance. And the displacement is just the straight line length between where you ended and started. So let's look at uh, graphically what's the difference between distance and displacement. So distance, if we had our 5 and 2, well, the 2, you can't have a negative. So that can't be. So we're going to turn that into a positive, and when we do that, we add them together, we get our seven units of, of length, whatever that is. And displacement, however, we can have a negative value, and so we would get a three there. Let's look at velocity and speed now. So velocity is defined as displacement over time, which, again, can be negative, since displacement can be negative. So velocity can be negative, right? You could be moving backwards. And so that is a vector quantity. It can also be defined as the speed, but in some direction. You have to specify the direction. Speed, however, is the absolute value of the velocity, which is always positive. This is therefore speed is a scalar quantity. It's what your speedometer on your car reads. It tells you your, how fast you're going, but not the direction you're going. The units of speed and velocity are, for example, meters per second or in IB. It can be written like this. It can be any unit of length per any unit of time, so feet per hour, centimeter per minute, et cetera, et cetera. Let's um, look at what the difference between an average and instantaneous quantities are. So if we look at instantaneous first, that means it's at a specific time, at an instant in time. Average, however, is over the entire trip. So let's take an example. So a student drives eight, kilom uh, eight kilometers east and four kilometers south to school it takes 20 minutes. What can you conclude about the average and instantaneous speed and velocity in this case? So if you want to talk about that, you can, because the answer is going to be shown here. Pause it now. OK, so here we go. The average speed is our total distance. So 12 kilometers divided by our 20 minutes gives us 6 tenths of a kilometer per minute. The average velocity is the displacement over the total time, 20 minutes. So the displacement, you need to do the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, square root of 8 squared plus 4 squared. You do that, you get about 8.9 kilometers. And that in 20 minutes, you get 4 tenths of a kilometer per minute. And that direction, if you go 8 east and then 4 south, I'm just, we can calculate what the exact, that exact angle is. But we can also, I'm just saying for this example, it's kind of east southeast. It's kind of down there. If you look at the analog clock, maybe around 4, 4 or 5, 5 o'clock, somewhere in that direction. Um, about the instantaneous speed and velocity, we really can't say anything because we don't know what happened during the trip. Um, maybe we could say that the you know the student started at zero and ended at zero. So let's talk about acceleration. This is defined as how velocity changes with time. It's given by delta v or delta t, or the change in velocity over change in time, which can be negative. So it's an ex it's a vector quantity. And you can have both instantaneous and average quantities in terms of acceleration. The units of acceleration are a little strange, but it, it makes sense. So if speed is meters per second, or velocity is meters per second, and you divide that by time, you get another unit of time there. So you get meters per second square. Any unit of length per time squared will give you a unit of acceleration. OK, we're going to do some motion analysis here now. And we can represent motion in multiple ways, just like we do in math. right? We can have an equation. We can use graphs. Uh, we can put the data in a table, like we do when we're in a lab taking data. 
just like math class. And a graphing calculator is really good for this. So, so equations and motions are next. Okay, see ya.